Welcome to College Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Community, OSU prepare to celebrate MLK Day. Bottled water contains more plastic particles than previously thought. Illinois star Terrence Shannon Jr. files restraining order against school following suspension. Michigan offense goes dormant after starting fast, springs back to life late to put away Huskies. What's next for Jim Harbaugh? Michigan coach faces decision on whether to stay or go back to NFL. Community, OSU prepare to celebrate MLK Day. Yahoo! The Stillwater community in Oklahoma will be celebrating Martin Luther King, Jr. Day with a Unity Walk and other events, despite expected low temperatures and snow. The Unity Walk is planned for Monday, though the Oklahoma State University, OSU, contingent will be making a final decision today based on wind chill factors. The events will also include a celebration of the life and legacy of the civil rights leader on Sunday, where the community will gather to view a choir performance and to hear a speech from a university representative. Bottled water contains more plastic particles than previously thought. South China Morning Post. A new study has found that a typical one-liter bottle of water contains around 240,000 plastic fragments, many of which are invisible to the naked eye. The study is the first to evaluate bottled water for the presence of nanoplastics, plastic particles under 1 micrometer in length. Nanoplastics pose a greater threat to human health than microplastics as they are small enough to enter human cells and can pass through the placenta to unborn babies. The researchers behind the study are also planning to investigate nanoplastics in tap water and snow samples collected from Western Antarctica. Illinois star Terrence Shannon Jr. files restraining order against school following suspension. Associated Press. University of Illinois basketball player Terrence Shannon Jr. has filed a temporary restraining order against the university to be reinstated after being suspended indefinitely following a rape charge. Shannon's attorneys argue that the university rushed to judgment and did not follow its protocols. The university has stated that it will review the lawsuit and defend its disciplinary methods. Shannon was charged with rape in December and the alleged incident occurred in September when the football team played at Kansas. Shannon is currently the second-leading scorer in the Big Ten Conference. Michigan offense goes dormant after starting fast, springs back to life late to put away Huskies. Associated Press. Michigan dominated Washington in the college football playoff championship game, ultimately winning with a score of 34-13. The Wolverines had a strong start, with Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards leading a ground game that generated 174 yards in the first quarter. However, the team's offense slowed down in the middle of the game, as Washington made adjustments to plug the holes in the defense. Michigan's offense came back to life in the final quarter, securing their victory. Corum finished with 134 yards and two touchdowns, while Edwards had 104 yards and two TDs. This marked the first time in a CFP title game that a team had two rushers go over 100 yards. Some fans complained about missed holding calls by Michigan's offensive line, but the team ultimately took home the national championship trophy. What's next for Jim Harbaugh? Michigan coach faces decision on whether to stay or go back to NFL. Associated Press. Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh's future with the Wolverines is uncertain following their victory over Washington in the college football playoff championship game. Harbaugh has previously looked into NFL jobs, and there are concerns about possible NCAA sanctions for recruiting violations and a sign-stealing scandal that affected the team this season. Michigan has said it wants to retain Harbaugh, but he has delayed contract talks, leading to speculation that he may be open to NFL offers. Harbaugh has transformed the program during his nine-year tenure, going 89-25 and winning three straight Big Ten championships. Weak economy, COVID rampage likely shrank China's population again in 2023. Yahoo! China's population is expected to have dropped for the second year in a row in 2023 due to a surge in COVID-related deaths following the abrupt ending of strict lockdowns. The country's birth rate has been declining since 2016 due to factors such as gender inequality and high childcare costs. Additionally, youth unemployment reached record highs, the wages of civil servants and office workers fell and there was a crisis in the property sector. This is expected to impact China's economic growth and put more strain on local governments. Labour plans to use AI to tackle school absence. BBC. The UK Labour Party has announced plans to tackle poor school attendance if it comes to power. This includes using artificial intelligence to detect trends in absence. Around one in five children in England are persistently absent from school, twice the proportion before the COVID-19 pandemic. The Centre for Social Justice has suggested that more sport in schools could help address this, but some parents reportedly believe children do not need to attend school full-time. 
The Department for Education has said parents have a duty to ensure their children attend school. Study in the UK, Haruhiko Kuroda, 7. Nikkei Asia. Haruhiko Kuroda, the former governor of the Bank of Japan, BOJ, has discussed the role of Herod's twist in his career. Kuroda first wrote to The Economist in 1969 about the concept, which refers to situations where a decrease in demand raises prices in a depressed economy. He then met Sir Roy Herod, the economist after whom it was named, at Oxford University. Reflecting on his career, Kuroda said that Herod's twist had been quite instructive during his tenure as governor of the BOJ. High interest rates add £10 billion to cost of England's student loan system. Financial Times the Institute for Fiscal Studies has stated that higher interest rates increase the likely cost of England's student loan system by more than £10 billion a year, although this will not be captured by official measures. The think tank stated that the UK government could expect to make a total net loss of £7 billion a year on loans for people starting courses last year, compared with an annual profit of £3.2 billion if the government's own borrowing costs had remained at their late 2021 level. The difference is due to the annual yield on 15-year gilts rising from 1.2% to 4% by the end of 2023. List, Northeast Florida, Southeast Georgia Winter Storm School Closures, Early Releases. Yahoo! Schools across Florida, U.S. have been forced to close due to a winter storm. The Action News Jack's first alert weather team has declared a first alert weather day for Tuesday as the storm crosses the area. Local counties' district schools, private schools, colleges, and universities have begun announcing closures. The storm is expected to bring high winds, power outages, and the possibility of tornadoes. The closures started on Monday, however, the storm is expected to continue on Tuesday. The Action News Jack's website has been keeping track of the closures and will continue to update the information as and when it comes in. South Korea expected to ban dog meat served in some 1,600 restaurants. The Sydney Morning Herald. The South Korean parliament is expected to vote on a bill that would phase out the eating and selling of dog meat. The centuries-old practice is becoming increasingly controversial in the country, as more Koreans view dogs as family pets and criticism of how the animals are slaughtered has grown. If passed, the legislation will take effect after a three-year grace period and would be punishable by up to three years in prison or a fine of $34,000. A survey conducted by a Seoul-based think tank found that over 94% of respondents had not eaten dog meat in the past year and around 93% said they would not do so in the future. Jim Harbaugh delivers as Michigan overpowers Washington 34-13 to win national title. Associated Press. The Michigan Wolverines beat the Washington Huskies 34-13 in the college football playoff title game to win their first national championship since 1997. Despite suspensions and a sign-stealing scandal, Coach Jim Harbaugh led the Wolverines to victory, with Blake Corum running for 134 yards and two touchdowns in the fourth quarter. The team's defense also held Washington's prolific passing game to just one touchdown. The win comes after the NCAA investigated Michigan for potentially breaking rules over in-person scouting of opponents and using video equipment to decode play signals. Murray earns first career shutout, Stars score two shorthanded goals in 4-0 win at Minnesota. Associated Press. Matt Murray recorded his first career NHL shutout as the Dallas Stars defeated the Minnesota Wild 4-0. Murray, who made 23 saves in the game, earned his second NHL victory in his fourth career game. Tyler Seguin and Rube Hintz each had a goal and an assist for Dallas. The Stars' penalty kill was perfect on six wild power play opportunities. Dallas has scored nine special teams goals in two games against Minnesota this season. The two teams will face each other again on Wednesday night. In charts, how India has changed under Narendra Modi. Financial Times. India's economy under Prime Minister Narendra Modi has shown strong growth, reduced poverty rates, and improved infrastructure, but challenges remain in terms of job creation, unemployment, and gender inequality, according to an analysis by the Financial Times. India has been one of the fastest-growing large economies during Modi's tenure, with GDP growing at an average of 5.6% between 2014 and 2022. However, economists argue that faster growth is needed to absorb a growing workforce and achieve Modi's goal of becoming a developed country by 2047. Unemployment rates have remained high, particularly among young people, and the female labor force participation rate has decreased. India's press freedom ranking has also fallen, raising concerns about the country's democracy and its long-term economic prospects. Despite these challenges, Modi's government has made progress in reducing extreme poverty and expanding the middle class.
The share of India's population living in extreme poverty fell from 18.7% in 2015 to 12% in 2021, and the middle class has grown rapidly. The government has implemented social transfer programs and used technology to direct welfare transfers to beneficiaries more efficiently. Infrastructure spending has increased, and India has made significant strides in digital connectivity and digital payments. However, there are concerns about the quality of jobs created and the underemployment problem. India's official unemployment numbers are disputed and may not accurately reflect the true state of the labor market. Women's labor force participation rates have decreased, and social and safety barriers prevent many women from working outside the home. The Modi government has been criticized for its record on press freedom and basic freedoms, with watchdog groups downgrading India's rankings. Overall, while India has made progress under Modi's leadership, there are still significant challenges to overcome in order to achieve the country's economic and social goals. San Francisco supervisors will take up resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. The Toronto Star. San Francisco supervisors will vote on a resolution today calling for a sustained ceasefire in Gaza. The resolution, which has no legal authority, was introduced by Supervisor Dean Preston and calls for humanitarian aid, the release of hostages and condemnation of anti-Semitic, anti-Palestinian, Islamophobic, and all xenophobic rhetoric and attacks. Numerous amendments have been proposed, many of which reflect the tensions between pro-Israel and pro-Palestinian groups. Similar resolutions have been passed by local U.S. officials, despite having no impact on international affairs. That's all the news for today, folks. Let's recap what we've learned. 1. The Stillwater community in Oklahoma is preparing to celebrate Martin Luther King, Jr. Day with a unity walk and other events, despite the expected cold weather and snow. 2. A new study has found that bottled water contains more plastic particles than previously thought, including nanoplastics that can pose a greater threat to human health. 3. University of Illinois basketball player Terrence Shannon Jr. has filed a restraining order against the university following his suspension after a rape charge. The university will review the lawsuit and defend its disciplinary methods. 4. The Michigan Wolverines dominated the Washington Huskies in the college football playoff championship game, securing their first national championship since 1997. 5. The future of Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh with the Wolverines is uncertain. Harbaugh has delayed contract talks, leading to speculation that he may be open to NFL offers. 6. China's population is expected to have dropped for the second year in a row in 2023 due to a surge in COVID-related deaths and other economic factors. 7. The UK Labour Party has announced plans to tackle poor school attendance, including using artificial intelligence to detect trends in absence. 8. Haruhiko Kuroda, the former governor of the Bank of Japan, discussed the role of Herod's twist in his career and its impact on economic policies during his tenure. 9. Higher interest rates are projected to increase the cost of England's student loan system by more than £10 billion a year, according to the Institute for Fiscal Studies. 10. Schools across Florida have been forced to close due to a winter storm, bringing high winds, power outages, and the possibility of tornadoes. 11. The South Korean parliament is expected to vote on a bill that would phase out the eating and selling of dog meat. 12. The Michigan Wolverines defeated the Washington Huskies in the college football playoff title game to win their first national championship since 1997. 13. Matt Murray recorded his first career NHL shutout as the Dallas Stars defeated the Minnesota Wild 4-0. 14. An analysis by the Financial Times shows that India's economy under Prime Minister Narendra Modi has shown strong growth, reduced poverty rates, and improved infrastructure but challenges remain in terms of job creation, unemployment, and gender inequality. 15. San Francisco supervisors will vote on a resolution calling for a sustained ceasefire in Gaza, addressing humanitarian aid and condemning xenophobic rhetoric and attacks. Phew, that was quite a diverse range of news stories today. From celebrating MLK Day to plastic pollution in bottled water, from college football championships to the future of Jim Harbaugh, and from China's population decline to India's economic progress under Narendra Modi. It's always fascinating to explore the different issues happening around the world. Now, it's time for you, my dear viewers, to share your thoughts. What do you make of these news stories? Are you surprised by the findings on plastic particles in bottled water? Do you have any opinions on the future of Jim Harbaugh or the economic challenges facing China and India? Let me know in the comments below. Remember, the world is full of interesting and diverse perspectives, so let's keep the discussion respectful and open-minded. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. And that's a wrap. Stay curious, stay informed, and I'll see you next time on the 6 Degrees Briefing.
Take care and keep exploring the world of news. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief by email.